Hi everyone, my name is Cassandra Ballantyne, editor of DPS Magazine. Welcome to today's webinar, which will focus on web to print The world of web to print continues to evolve, further entrenching its necessity for today's B2B and B2C print providers. Our October issue, which should be hitting the streets in the next couple of days, highlights web to print with a focus on integrated design capabilities. We're going to talk about this and more in today's webinar. I'm going to start um, by introducing the panelists. So first up, we have um, Alex with Customers Canvas. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, thanks, Cassandra. I'm here representing a Rigma company, as you mentioned. Uh, we develop a, a web to print platform by the name of Customers Canvas. Uh, it serves as a gateway for uh, print businesses to explore the digital sales uh, channels. Um, Customers Canvas helps, helps printers to build an uh, online ordering process for print products, promotional goods, or packaging. It can be integrated with both uh, standard e-commerce platforms like Shopify or Magento or with a custom-made uh, online storefront. Our platform includes a cloud admin panel uh, to store all product information uh, and easy-to-use online editors and a robust uh, rendering engine that converts design data into print-ready files. Uh, besides providing the technology and a user-friendly uh, backend to, man to manage the integration, we also offer professional services uh, to assist our clients in finding the most effective solution uh, to, for their business needs, uh, aiming at reducing time to market and achieving the best return on investment. Glad to be here and look forward to a meaningful talk. Thank you, Alex. Um, next up, I want to introduce Greg Salzman with Alliant. Or I said that wrong again. <laughs> That's all right. Thank you, Cassandra. My name is Greg Salzman. I'm the CEO of Alliant Systems. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, we are a software company. We've been uh, serving the printing industry for 18 years now. Uh, we have four products. We have Procero, which is our web to print uh, storefront system. Uh, with Procero, you can create both B2B and B2C storefronts. Uh, we have eDoc Builder, which is a document personalization system, so you, you can allow your customers to design documents within their web browser. Uh, we have Print Job Manager, which is a web-based, uh, real easy-to-use uh, print MIS and estimating platform. And we have Tflow, which is a pre-press uh, workflow automation platform. Uh, with Tflow, you can do a lot of things like pre-flight and uh, fix files. So all of our uh, tools run in the cloud. Um, we uh, uh, offer you know, all of our software on a subscription basis. So you're, you're paying monthly. So uh, we have a real emphasis on keeping our software very affordable and uh, we do an awful lot of support. So we are, want to really look at ourselves as your partner and that's how we want you to view us. And uh, we want to make you successful. That's how we look at ourselves. Thank you, Greg. Um, next up, we have Trent with On Print Shop. Hi, everybody. Thanks, and Cassandra, always great to be a part of your, your webinars. We appreciate the fact that we, we've been invited. So my name's Trent Foreman. I'm the regional manager for North America for On Print Shop. So who we are, we're a web to print and order management platform. And as a 23-year development company that understands the print industry, we've brought some of the best most expansive functionality into a very extremely usable and versatile cloud-based platform that has the ability to be customized to meet your needs while providing that very modern customer experience. So our goal, much like what you're going to hear a lot of my, my counterparts here, is to help simplify the order capture process. We want to help reduce your operational costs, build those efficiencies through integrations and interfaces, and really help your business grow by trying to capture those those new segments, those new customers, both in a, a consumer-based B2C model or in those private B2B stores. So we're here to talk. We're here to help you and uh, look forward to what we have to talk about today. Thank you, Trent. Um, next up, we have Chris with Infigo. Thanks, Cassandra. Hello, everyone. I'm Chris from Infigo. I'm the head of global marketing here in the UK. Uh, Infigo is a leading provider of web to print um, software solutions for print labels and packaging. Uh, we pride ourselves with our industry knowledge, our extensive integrations and an amazing partner network, which allows us to bring both uh, online revenue and also um, bring revenue offline within the factory and the workflow. Our SaaS based solution is scalable and allows our customers to generate both B2B and B2C storefronts ready for online and believe it or not, ready to take transaction in a matter of minutes. 
Uh, we're privately owned. We operate a multinational team with many years of industry experience, and we have a plethora of modules and integrations and plugins. Um, but we pride ourselves on putting the right tailor-made solution together to match the business that we're talking to. Thank you, and uh, looking forward to working with you guys tonight. Thank you, Chris. Let's see. Um, so now we're going to start the discussion. Um, when we first started talking about web to print, like more than a decade ago, we focused a lot on storefronts and ordering. Um, these tools continue to evolve, and there's many different aspects of it. Um, for this webinar, we're going to talk about design aspects of it in particular, and we'll go a little bit beyond that, but um, for the most part, that's where we'll land. So Alex, in 2022, Customer Canvas released its Simple Editor. Can you tell me a little bit about this product and why it was added to your, your product line and how it has been received and utilized over the past year? So our debut in 2014, uh, we've provided uh, our customers uh, uh, with a VZVIC online editor. Uh, however, the feedback highlighted uh, the need for a simpler uh, alternative um, in certain situations. Uh, thus, the simple editor was born. Uh, this tool enables uh, end users to select uh, product attributes and design content uh, without interacting uh, with Canvas, uh, which is um, applicable in many B2B scenarios. Uh, plus, it's also mobile friendly. Uh, this new editor is not only uh, more simplistic for the end users, uh, but also a breeze for uh, to implement uh, by the storefront uh, owners. Um, there is no complicated setup process. Uh, the editor self-configures, which means products can uh, get to market uh, faster. Uh, the reception uh, for the new editor from our clients has been uh, quite positive so, uh, so far. Uh, as I touched uh, on um, earlier, our aim is to support our clients in crafting the most effective ordering process. And uh, Simple Editor is a valuable addition to our toolkit, enable more tailored user experience to meet uh, diverse requirements. Um, it's all about making the digital order journey as intuitive and effective, uh, efficient uh, as possible. And uh, we believe that the simple editor is a significant a significant stride uh, in that direction. Thank you, Alex. Um, of course, customer canvas isn't alone in its design capabilities. Um, Alain offers, often touts its eDoc builder, which is, I believe, offered as a cloud-based solution for integration into e-commerce storefronts or included as part of its Presario web to print. So, Greg, can you talk more about eDoc Builder and its integration capabilities? Absolutely. So, you know, historically, eDoc Builder, you know, which again is this online document personalization tool, was just part of Procero. And what happened is we had a lot of companies calling and saying, you know, I don't need the storefront. I already have my own storefront system. I just need that personalization tool. And so at some point along the line, we actually kind of broke that out and, and repositioned it as a, as a separate product. So um, as you alluded to, Cassandra, anyone who purchases Procero does get eDoc Builder included, but we have a number of customers that just come to us and they only license eDoc Builder. Uh, and, and there's a couple ways to get it. You know, we do have, uh, there's other uh, software solutions within the printing industry, they license it. And so you can get it as part of, as part of uh, those solutions. Uh, the other alternatives come directly to us. And, um, you know, there's gonna be a little bit of uh, software development work to integrate it. We have, you know, a couple different models. Uh, we take what's called a, an API first development model so that, you know, almost anything that happens you know, through the user interface can also be replicated uh, through an API. That can get very complicated. We also have a much simpler approach, which is uh, done by just kind of uh, invoking uh, kind of like a widget um, within the within your storefront where you can just kind of open up the design experience. Your customer can do that, you know, and then when they're done, it closes. It passes information back to your storefront. Uh, and then, you know, later when they've, you know, checked out, that's when your your storefront would, would then go and, you know, hit an API command to pull the print ready file out, you know, that you could go ahead and, and do some uh, printing with. Uh, either way, you know, just to just to be transparent, there is going to be some development work associated with that. Uh, but it's it's something that we see uh, happen routinely with uh, lots of different printing companies. It's something uh, very feasible and, you know, again, something we're ready to help you out with. Thank you, Greg. Um, in addition to design and editing capabilities, we want to talk about proofing a little bit. In fact, when it comes to print order management, artwork approval can take a lot of time and emails. 
on print shops design proofing software for artwork projects is meant to help print providers save time on proofing an artwork approval. So Trent, can you tell me a little bit more about how proofing is streamlined with tools like on print shops collaborative artwork proofing software? Okay, so Cassandra, you're you're an editor. I'll, how many times a week do you ask the question, is the proof approved? Where's the artwork? Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's the, it, it's, an, it's an everyday phrase in every print shop, basically across the country, marketing departments, everybody, it, who's got the proof? I mean, it can be in one of 15 different places, 100 different places. So, so what happened with us is roughly about six years ago, we had one of our customers who actually is a customer that specializes in funeral programs uh, sit down and kind of talk to us about the fact of just the amount of back and forth that they would have to do with, with family members, with, with the funeral homes to make sure is the design right, the picture's right. Did we get the right, all the family members, everything. And it was, it involved a lot of emails, a lot of phone calls, notes, different files with different designers all of that just kind of based off on who worked around it. And, and depending on who, who worked on it, it, it could be in a different place. And if that designer was on vacation, we all know the story. So it was really bogging them down. So what we did um, is, is we sat down and worked with them and helped to develop a, a level of functionality that allowed them to really bring all of that inside of, of on print shop in the platform and let them manage not only that back and forth communication, but, but the notes, the revisions, the discussion, all in one place. And so, you know, by adding for, for on print shop, you add the design proofing tool. What we've seen is a reduction in communication by what could be up to 50% because it's collaborative. It's not necessarily dependent upon a single point of contact. Your whole staff's there, your whole team's there. Um, if someone's on vacation, you can still see what's going on inside of that, uh, you know, inside of that order with that proof. You can see the notes, you can see the revisions, and, and the most important part, and you can get alerted on this, is you can see the approval. So you know that it's ready to go. Customers can be notified when a revision or a new file is, is sent down. Uh, it can be viewed, it can be managed. If, if the file comes in and needs to be changed, if they send you a file in Corel Draw or or that's not sized appropriately in it, and they, it, they say they go ahead and push it through anyway, you make the revision and you send it back and say, hey, I just need you to proof this. All of that can be done and tracked as you go back and forth. So, you know, this really helps, especially when you have, you know, multiple art files inside of a job, what's approved, what's not. It makes it real easy to work with the customer. Um, what I really like about this is it's a good example of how something that started really as a custom workflow development, maybe for one of our larger customers, has been migrated into the overall platform. So it's, it's a part of the order management and on print shop platform. It's available to all the subscribers. So for a small print shop, this can save a ton of time and a ton of effort in what typically we've seen or can be seen as causing some of the biggest delays is just simply, is the artwork correct? Well, I can't start printing or I, heaven forbid, you printed it wrong and now you have to reprint it. So that's where the design proofing tool comes into play and, and really allows you to you know, bring all of that information and communication back into one single point of, of uh, the platform. All right, thanks Trent. So designing proofing applications is part of the puzzle. Um, I also wanna talk about storefronts. Companies like Infigo offer content management tools that enable users to build professional ePrint web pages ready to start taking online orders in hours. Chris, can you talk more about the features and functions available to print providers that want to create custom storefronts? Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you, Cassandra. Um, <clears throat> first of all, it's minutes, not hours, but um, I'll, uh, we can go over that one later. I think let, let's go back a, a, few, a few steps first of all. We, we've been through a seismic change in a, uh, with the COVID and, and coming out the other side. And what we've seen is the society and expectation now um, requires us as web to print providers to to offer more for our customers and our customers' customers. So we're in a world now where everybody, everybody is expecting the Amazon experience um, coming out of COVID, coming out of lockdowns. Uh, we've also seen, especially in America as well, a lot more startups with online businesses. And therefore, um, there's a pressure on web to print providers now to be more than just web to print. And I'll, and I'll go into a bit more detail in a second on what, what that means and what that entails. But I think also there's an opportunity as well, and we should look at the positives that COVID has given the web to print space as well, where we're now front and center and have an amazing opportunity to help the print industry grow and thrive. Um, since we've come out of those, those lockdowns and that COVID time, the, the technology and uh, the, the opportunities available to us on, in our software, in, in our offering, 
has just absolutely jumped, you know, light, light speed. And that's exciting. We're now seeing, and as Trent just mentioned, pre-flighting is now something that is, is standard or should be standard in every uh, web to print uh, workflow, whether it's a B2C or B2B storefront. We're seeing 3D previews. So we're seeing that special in Figo with our, with our labeling and with the, the beer market, the craft beers, the coffees. We're seeing 3D previews now, something that the consumer wants to see. And even some of the B2B customers as well also would like to see a visual uh, 3D preview as well as the pre flighting kind of uh, functionality as part of their journey. We're also seeing packaging, and again in America, North America and Canada, the packaging industry is a very exciting place to be right now. And there's a parametric side of the designer coming in. We've also got AI, a lot more intelligence starting to come into how our software can work. What does this all mean? Well, this is all going to help us with that Amazon experience, because before COVID, we probably just would have thought about the front end, um, taking the order, taking the money, banking those dollars. Whereas now I think we're slowly, uh, all of us are taking on this journey where we're learning about well, what happens when that, that artwork's been pre fighted as Trent was just explaining. Where does that then go? Where does that information then go upstream? And what comes back to the end user? And I think not just not, it's not just a case of are we providing a B2B or a B2C, but we're now providing both B2B, both B2C to the, to the same customer because they now need to be looking at their existing customer base, their B2B customers and keeping them sticky, keep making them feel sort of uh, safe and loved and giving them what they need on a regular basis, but also then to diversify as well. And we've seen the growth of the labels market. So now we're seeing that our web to print uh, platforms, our storefronts are now offering multiple verticals. So I think it's a very exciting time. Um, I think there's so much technology out there for us all. Um, we have obviously a pressure to, to deliver, as I say, the Amazon experience but um, also we are leading the charge and we have a massive opportunity. Thank you, Chris. I'm just gonna add everyone back out um, to the stage now because um, the second part of the webinar, I'll make it a little bit more um, conversational since we had a chance to kind of deep dig into each one of your options a little bit. Um, so for the next question, as e-commerce environments offer more functionality, it gets complicated to manage all of these digital assets and or products. Today's web to print systems, to, today's web to print systems offer anything to help manage and streamline the process, making it easy for print providers to offer and manage a variety of products through their e-commerce platform. Alex, do you want to start this question off for us? Oh, you're on mute though. <laughs> <laughs> it always happens to somebody, <laughs> usually me. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's me that time. Uh, yes, sure, Cassandra. Thanks. Uh, that's a, a, a great question, actually. Uh, the thing is that uh, managing product catalog is probably one of the most labor-intensive tasks that every print shop will have to, to face when selling online. It get it gets. Uh, even uh, worse, uh, if the printer uh, prefers e-commerce platforms like Shopify or WooCommerce, um, again, I mentioned them because they have become very popular among printers lately, but it's also true for uh, pretty much any other e-commerce platform. Uh, those platforms have uh, many advantages and they're um, excellent solutions, but uh, they weren't designed uh, uh, for print providers uh, in the first place and struggle with products that uh, might have up to several hundred variations um, to, to fully manage such a catalog and up, update it promptly. It often becomes necessary to use uh, like uh, third party plugins, which might not come along uh, well with uh, each other. And um, if you add to this the need to attach different assets to product variants, uh, such as templates or image galleries, uh, it becomes an extremely complex system to manage. And uh, we haven't even touched on the topic of complex pricing. Uh, I can um, can you imagine if you add uh, to this having multiple online sales channels to work with? Um, in order to help our clients to simplify uh, these tasks, uh, this this task this task uh, we uh, even had to create a whole product information management module uh, within Customers Canvas. Um, uh, it allows printers to maintain a large uh, product catalog even inside. Uh, uh, e-commerce solutions that are not uh, entirely suited uh, for this purpose. Uh, so we simplify the task of creating complex product models, 
uh, with multiple product variations uh, attaching uh, assets like uh, product uh, pre-designed templates uh, to uh, and also associate those templates to uh, different product variations uh, we also connect products to uh, one or perhaps many storefronts uh, uh, including like different sales channels like maybe uh, online storefront maybe some sort of social uh, selling platforms etsy and stuff like this and uh, uh, we even can uh, help automate the task of uh, generating previews for different product variants and sending them to uh, like e-commerce platforms to uh, visualize the product uh, variation uh, like for products with many um, possible uh, options and values does anybody have anything else to add about um, digital product management when it comes to web to print yeah I've, I've got something cassandra actually i was just going to say i think sometimes it's worth um you know, sticking to what you're good at um we, obviously everybody on this on this call we're all we're all specialists in what we do and, and we know our onions so to speak um i think sometimes it's worth looking at what's the end goal well the end goal is we want to keep the uh, the print shop uh, with the presses rolling we want to keep the, the dollars going into the bank account and sometimes we know where we're good as web to print providers but maybe it's the the specialists that come further down the workflow that we should be talking to to make sure that, that that our customers the printer has everything right everything in place so that you know we don't just do a good job but actually and it, and it then stops mm -hmm. it's working with the specialists that can make sure that the that the file whether it's the uh, the order management whether it's the mis whether it's the pre-flighting whether the positioning the finishing whatever it is i think it's worth looking at all of those aspects because that really is also part of our responsibility to make sure that that order from the minute it hits the storefront goes right the way back through to a, a shipped delivery and you could even integrate with a um a shipping provider and then you could have a complete uh turnkey lights out automation where actually the print shop don't even doesn't even touch anything it, it all works uh, uh seamlessly but uh, yeah what i'm basically saying is take a step back and look at the specialists that you can work with and mm -hmm. allow them to help you by plugging in the back of your your amazing web to print store from right okay well then can i jump in on this yeah. one yeah. And, and you know we're talking about you know completely in agreement with you there chris and you know when you're when you're talking about product management you know across platforms and you know i've, I've had customers that have had you know, 200 plus B2B portals along with their, their consumer base, because, you know, and I'm kind of in our world, the, the, you know, where you, where you really can make your money is you get that customer and you provide that portal. And now you've got that dedicated place you're putting in, you know, so you, you always go lowest common denominator. You take a business card and, and that business card, you know, you're going to do it. A, you know, there's only so many ways you can do a business card with different types of paper unless it's just something completely specialty but you want to be able to take that and manage it across those different portals those different platforms for those different customers you know we've been talking design in a lot of ways here so you have a templated design where you know the employee marketing's already you know laid out the design customer just the the employee just updates their name but it's still a business card on 130 pound double coated cover so managing that in one place but maybe updating the pricing yeah. based on who the customer is maybe updating the design based on who the customer is and, and not having to kind of do that across you know multiple times you get it all in one place you know with a description with a picture with a you know a, a an updated you know here's what it is and we all saw paper shortages so being able to say mm, well i'm out of 130 pound blazer you know, this, this week, I'm going to take that out and add in a different type of paper, you know, connecting to an MIS system, if that's what you're using, allows you to make those easy changes so that, you know, again, it's, it's all about efficiency. It's making sure you can manage everything in one place. Right. And just on Trent's point there, actually, really, really good point there, Trent, MIS and, and updating everything in, in, in one area. You know, if you're really clever and you want to get really into the intricate detail, with your integration with an MIS, you'd have live pricing coming back onto your storefront. Yeah. And then the print the print shop owner is only updating it in one place. And I think the biggest one, which is which is a, something we should all be aware of, and it's also a, a, a USP for the printer as well, is waste. You know, we're mm -hmm. living in a world now where we need to be sustainably friendly and we need to be looking at, you know, what, what are our ethics? What do we stand for? And I think if you've got a, an efficient workflow or an efficient 
automated system that you can then monitor the waste as well. I mean, I think was it twelve months ago we had a paper shortage. Um, was, it 12, was it just was it just twelve months ago? <laughs> just twelve months ago. Just twelve months ago. But yeah, I think it's it's, it's crazy. I, it, we, this is why I come back to this phrase more than just web to print because I think um, we can't just. We can't just put our, our storefront up and get it live and get it online. Yeah. It has to, you have to continue to understand the full 360. Mm. Okay, ready to move on? <laughs> um, while print providers would all love jobs to be perfectly print ready, that's rarely the case. Automating some of the pre-press process so jobs are automatically pre-flighted and adjusted is a reality for some. So Greg, can you talk more about the types of automation available through or by web to print providers today? Um, sure. So <laughs> automation is an enormous, you know, enormous <laughs> topic, right? <laughs> so um, maybe what's helpful is just to kind of look through the whole job life cycle and maybe just hit some of the highlights. Otherwise, we could we could be here for <laughs> hours, right? But uh, we've had many um, automation webinars. <laughs> Right, right. So, um, but I think Cassandra, you, you specifically asked about. Uh, did you specifically ask about pre-flight, or are you just asking in general? Uh, yeah. That, so that was, yeah. The okay. Of, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so certainly, you know, a lot of web to print platforms um, are able to do pre-flight, so they're able to look at, at common problems within print files. You know, is is it the right size, right? So you're you're ordering a poster, but you you uploaded a business card size file, right? <laughs> uh, let's let's catch that right away. Or you you're ordering business cards, but you uploaded a three page document. Let let's catch that right away. You know, so there's there's a lot of just really common problems that that we want to track immediately, and in a lot of cases, you want to notify the customer right away. And in some cases, you don't want to notify the customer. You actually want to get someone involved within your company. And, and ideally, you want to be able to configure that because you know your customer best, right? Uh, you know, so you think about it. Let's say the customer uploads a file. You wanted a 300 DPI image in there. But guess what? One of the 17 images in there is 289 DPIs. Do you, do you want to automatically reject that file and tell them it's not good enough? No, you don't want to do that. Uh, if it's really important, you know, that you want to fix that, you would probably want to go back to them in person. Otherwise, they're going to get a message and they're just going to go somewhere else, right? So so a really important part of, of pre-flight is being able to configure how you handle those exceptions and uh, being able to indicate whether we're going to just notify the customer or whether we're going to get a person involved. Related to pre-flight then is doing some automatic automatic fixing. So there's uh, an incredible number of things that, that uh, tools are able to do um, and uh, we're able to do them quickly, you know, such as, uh, you know, resizing pages, uh, fixing bleeds, you know, handling missing fonts. Um, you know, some of the most common problems are readily addressable automatically. And uh, I think that's really important because um, we can do that automatically. And, um, you know, you think about the, you know, one of the issues with, with files, you know, having problems with customer send is, first of all, they need to wait until a person can look, look at them. Um, and then it takes time for a person to look at them. And then a person who's looking at them may, may miss the problem, right? And you don't even address that till it gets. So, so it's really important to embed these tools right into your ordering process. Uh, you can get feedback either directly to your customer or to your staff so they can get back to the customer, fix them. Um, ideally, these tools are, are also associated with a real-time proofing tool so that any changes that you make um, to the tool can then be proofed real time uh, by the customer. Okay. Anybody else have anything to add there? Or he did a pretty good. I, I think he hit it. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a good point. It's there. a kind of worms, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what, it's everything. I honestly think anything that has to do with workflow or web to print is a can of worms. And I try to narrow it down, but it always, <laughs> it's yeah. not. Yeah. But it's good. It's a good conversation. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I was going to say, Cassandra, it's all about trying to simplify it because it, and again, tailor it. It all depends on the individual's um, configuration in their in their print shop. It all depends on what they're trying to achieve as a business. It all just depends on where their pain points are. It all mm -hmm. depends where they're looking to generate revenue. I think that's why we say it's a can of worms because there's you know not one size fits all. Right, that's so true. Um, so next, we like to talk a lot about um, digitally printed packaging. 
So with the capability to produce cost-effective short runs, packaging buyers want to be able to easily customize and personalize packaging. Um, so can today's web to print systems handle packaging and maybe as a subset of that labels, what features and functions are necessary and what are the limitations? Um, Chris, do you want to start us off on that one? Yeah, yeah, sure. I think um, this is something that's quite dear to our hearts here in Vigo where we've started a bit of a journey 12 months ago. We went to um, a label expo in Chicago, uh, probably one of the first major shows since COVID and everyone getting back to, to normal. And we were blown away by the, the labels market in the US and North America. And uh, again, light packaging, really exciting uh, place to be right now. Um, but we also saw as well some, some trends and uh, by analyzing a little bit of uh, what was going on, we saw a commercial printers dipping their toe into, into the label space. And we saw um, sort of label printers as well who had, who had been probably slow to uh, adopt and, and uh, want to use web to print all of a sudden realizing they now need to use it and again that was sped up by uh, what happened with the pandemic um we've, we've seen that a lot of the tools that we've already spoken about on this call the pre-flighting the processing uh the integrations they're a major part of the, of the labels and, and the packaging space right now and uh, if you follow the same mindset in my humble opinion you're only going to be able to really enjoy some of that success as you know the different partners the different specialists in those areas will will bring you the knowledge that you need to plug into your your web to print platform um but as i say one of the things we we're working with at the moment is with a b2b slash b2c style approach and we always say to customers as well diversify if you can um <laughs> because you know that's something that's really really important and that's something that all of us on this call have this ability to provide multiple revenue streams with our platform so yeah does anybody want, want to add there about um specific features and things that they should be looking for from a packaging perspective well i was going to hit on that in the next your, yeah of, your next question I'm, is I'm coming right into, i'm coming right into all that but yeah but I'll, yeah I'll, 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 <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So I'll, re I'll, I'll jump into that one. So labels, we were just talking about labels, packaging, our yeah. growth area. So how can web to print be leveraged to grow label and packaging businesses for a print provider? Well, and, and you look at it in two ways and, and I'll go right along with Chris on a lot of this and look at it kind of in two ways. It's those labels and packaging, you know, the very niche market printers that have always kind of been there that now need to kind of expand and get out there and you know you start looking at that that consumer base look or you know a, a private b2b look or if you're talking about you know much like what all, a lot of us like to talk about in our worlds of you know what is the thing web to print is really good for and that really is you know kind of expanding your your offering set and, and reaching a new customer base so you know whereas you know labels packaging traditionally you know up until recently been a very niche market you didn't have a whole lot of people only a few people that could really do it well i mean you saw it at the at the show the technology just like everything else technology is starting to really catch up and really advance so now more and more people are able to kind of step into that and you can now kind of play with the big boys when it comes to you know in some cases they're custom design sites that, that only offer this so you know as we talk about the advance in technology and chris touched on it a little bit ago we start talking about 3D previews, 3D, you know, renderings, um, you know, being able to not just see that box in a flat format that I put my design on, but okay, what does it look like folded up? How does the top open? You know, how does, how is this going to look in the hands? I mean, we're all very visual people. Our consumers are very visual people. So, you know, in, in this segment, being able to kind of see the labels on a, you know, we, we've got a, a pouch and a, and a, and a bottle, whatever you want to have in that bottle is completely up to you, but it, you know, on the bottle, you can see your, you can see your label, how it's wrapped around in the bottle and, and it gives that visual experience. So, you know, if you're going to your buyer, whether it's a consumer buyer that's looking for a short run, um, but still wants to kind of see how it looks, or it's that repeat corporate buyer that you may be doing this on demand for them in the, you know, tens of hundreds of thousands, however it is, you know, just seeing it all to, to be there is, is what you need. So the, the good web to print provider with the tools that let you expand that target segment, you don't necessarily have to do it. If you've got a trusted supplier, if you're connected into the big boys, the big trade players mm -hmm. that yeah. can do this for you, you know, now we're back to talking about integration and being able to go and pull. But, you know, mm -hmm. again, you can expand your segment, go in and offer. You may be in a part of the country or a part of the of the world 
where that's not necessarily you don't you don't have another player in that. Well, now you can offer it, and so you you touched and expanded that market. And you know, I guess going back to all of that, it's it's simply you're using this as a tool to show what else I can offer. And you're doing it in that modern customer experience that, again, you, you know, you see every, you know, what's come to expect in that, I hate to say it, Chris, the Amazon experience. <laughs> Turnkey solution. Just on that point, though, Trent, I think the biggest thing we've seen is we're going from, you know, uh, one times a million in terms of our, in, of our runs on the presses to oh, a, yeah. a million times one now. And, and actually, we're, it's our responsibility to provide a solution that can do one times a million and a million times one on, on two vertical tracks. And I think that just exactly what you just said there. That's where, the way that the public expect it. Mm -hmm. um, Alex and Greg, do you have anything to add on that point? Or? Uh, well, uh, I can just highlight that uh, well, um, um, enabling uh, like um, uh, custom packaging uh, offering on your website it's uh, uh, like a very challenging task compared to a regular uh, right. paper like paper product because uh, there are so many uh, like uh, you guys already mentioned that like 3d previews uh, ideally you want to uh, enable your customers to uh, navigate through the panels of the packaging to get the better idea of well <laughs> where is the top and where is the yeah. bottom and it uh, well uh, when it uh, well when we try to uh, combine all, all all of this with the like dynamic um, models like uh, generating on the fly and uh, like uh, pricing that comes uh, like uh, like dynamic pricing that comes uh, with with all all of that uh, and uh, uh, if we talk about like assembling all of this in the into the single uh, like processing uh, workflow it's a really uh, complicated task that is well, uh, well not, not not easy to implement by a like um, you, know, you know printers that want to uh, catch, catch up with the like uh, online first uh, companies and uh, 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 consider when you consider this uh, project is well you have to uh, really wait uh, all all like all the aspects of this integration and it's not going to be an easy journey. <laughs> no, I agree. Right. No, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that was pretty much all I had for my main questions. We did get a couple of um, inquiries in from the registrants. Um, one of them was asking about e-commerce platforms and integration with things like WooCommerce, Shopify, and Magneto. Um, is it commonplace for web to print to now integrate with those, those kinds of solutions? I would, I mean, I would say yes. Um, I mean, we've got a Shopify integration that, you know, if you've got static products, however you want to do that. That's why we talk about order management. Mm -hmm. If you've got, you know, a Shopify site that may be doing some engraved static products, things like that, you can still pull all that information, all those orders into and manage it all kind of in the back end and, and continue, you know, again, create that efficiency, but I mean, they're commonplace. Um, yeah. I mean, Shopify's huge. Magento's huge. Uh, a lot of people have, have developed their platforms on, on Magento. So yeah, I, I do think it's commonplace to see an integration of some kind into there. Yeah. I'd have to agree with that as well. We've, um, we've seen our editor sometimes been, you know, used within those sort of platforms as well. And I, again, I come back to it. It's whatever fits the, uh, the solution for the customer that works for them and i think that again that's our role at the end of the day is to provide a solution um to, to tailor their their needs yeah right. like, like chris we see our edoc builder editor uh often integrated into these platforms yeah. and, uh, yeah. and that's especially true for printers that are well uh, just uh, entering the online space and uh, well if you the newcomer here that will Shopify or WooCommerce is like uh, first place <laughs> you Google and then uh, yeah, you, you have to have the integration with those platforms. Okay. So I think, um, and the next question, which I'm sure it's, it's unique to every provider, of course, but um, what's the typical or general ROI that people can expect for a B2B web to print system? I, I knew. I just you're just gonna say. You, something. You, you really threw that. That Derek, I'd like to know who threw that one out. I think you're probably gonna get four different answers. <laughs> well, that's what I figured, but you know what? 
that's what we're here to talk about. So anybody want to? You know, I, I, I think we can all point to that one customer that's making like, you know, several thousand percentage yeah. ROI on our platform, right? But, um, you know, I, I think the, you know, if, if you're not making, um, boy, I, I think at least five times, you know, the ROI, um, I, I think you need to kind of take a step back and, and rethink about what you're doing. But um, yeah, I, I think there's there's so much opportunity for you to leverage a web to print platform. Uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm with you on that one, Greg. I think those those numbers are good. I think the other thing for me, I see year in, year out, you have your customers adopt the whole mindset from um, planning, implementation. They look at everything from marketing strategy, marketing budgets, who's going to be the product champion in house. They look at integrations. They, you know, they put a proper team behind the project. They um, invest a, a four year plan internally behind it. And then you see these guys at trade shows in the bar and then and the orders are just coming in and they're doing nothing because they put all that time and all that investment right. and they're making the money and they're going, hey, look, I've just taken, I've just sold, you know, 5,000 pouches or whatever and, I've, and I'm sipping my beer. And, and you know that's fantastic and that's great but unfortunately if you don't adopt or you don't invest that time in the whole thing in the whole project the whole 360 then those numbers are a lot lower and i guess what i'm trying to say cassandra is there is no uh, there is no set number yes yeah. uh, it all depends on the individual and, and uh, their approach to the project well and, and greg's right i mean if you're just looking at I mean, that's a good number, but yeah, if you're just looking at the the hard cost of maybe the implement the the setup and implementation, and then here's the uh, monthly, quarterly, annual subscription, and you're basing it all against that. To Chris's point, you're you're missing a lot of this because there's there's marketing that have, there's still some marketing, there's still some sales, and then there's some just internal that has to go into it. How much time are you going to spend on it? Because yeah. if you build it, they will not come. <laughs> just, just if you build it, they may not come. I should say. Right, <laughs> right. right. We we did we did put together a, an Excel file which allowed you to kind of calculate your ROI, but it but it was really just based on automation savings. You know, like okay, you know, we didn't have to have an estimator involved. You know, and so you save this much time because the customer could get real time pricing, and you didn't have to have a CSR involved in pricing, right? And th those are true cost savings. Yeah. But but I think what it doesn't capture is the opportunities that web to print creates, right? Yeah. So Trent is absolutely right. It's not a magic print selling machine, but in when used correctly, web to print is this tool that can create business opportunities for you that you would not have had otherwise. Mm -hmm. uh, we have heard this story so many times, and I'm sure everyone else on this panel has heard these stories too, of printing companies getting contracts with customers they would have never dreamed of getting in the past because they had a solid web to print platform behind them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and yeah. I think that's one of the most exciting aspects of web right. to print. That's yeah. the part that gets me most excited. You know, yeah, that's honestly, the message we want to put out is, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We don't want to miss the opportunities. So, mm -hmm. It depends on the, the area that you're using the web to print system as well. You know, are you wide format or large format? Are you are you packaging? Are you labels? Are you general commercial print? Are you just B2B? There's, there's so many different sort of caveats to, to mm -hmm. where they're using the system. But um, I mean, yeah, spot on, Greg. We're in a very exciting time to be a web print providers. And uh, that's immeasurable. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw it, but we, we found some customers during, uh, during COVID that because they had endorse web to print properly yes. all of a sudden they're selling they're selling masks and stuff yes. and, and it's like yeah. you know they're doing well you know and everybody that hadn't adopted web to print is either buying it or, or, or going out of business right. and uh, right. you know it's, uh, it's as you say it gives you that option greg and and, and trent and alex mm -hmm. to diversify well let me ask let me ask this too because this is something i think it's a trend that's that's we've kind of seen a little bit um, and, and all four of us are, you know, our, our companies are international. We have customers in, in other parts of the world, things like that. You know, in the U.S., I think up to that that COVID point, it's just that hard point of 20. Yeah. But, you know, B2B was probably the main focus. You, you had these customers that got that big, the hospital, the corporate that, you know, you were able to customize and do everything. But I think post kind of pandemic, we're seeing a resurgence in, in consumer base in B2C just because I think, and I do not want to say the name that starts with a V, it's just taboo. But, you know, I think before that, 
everybody was like, oh, I can't compete with that. Oh, I can't compete with that. Well, now they're like, well, I'm not competing with that, but I'm serving my general public and population of people that want to find me because now they're used to, you know, they're used to buying things like this now because we got to the pandemic and everybody started moving online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also I think as well, I hate to keep harping on about it, but you know, part of the, the beauty of the labels and the packaging space is a lot of people, especially in North America, set up their own businesses during mm -hmm. the, the pandemic. Yeah. And there's a lot of um, small, so we go back to the small runs again, a lot of small runs of sort of cosmetics, health food, pet food, coffees, um, you know, the, the, these, these craft beer companies popping up everywhere and they oh, all yeah. need somewhere to sell their product. But guess what? And dare I say it, let's, let's go CPD and marijuana as well. These guys all need personalization and they all need a web to print storefront. And, and they, don't need they don't need 100,000 pieces. They don't. A million times yeah. more. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that. I love that comment because you're right. Because with, with you know, you, you automate that capture, you automate that, that efficiency. You know, short run is not bad when you have 200 short run projects. That's no mm -hmm. different, you know. That, that's as long as you don't touch it. As long as you, yeah. touch it. As long as you don't have to touch it, yeah. As long as you don't have to do a lot of the touching, but but still, I mean, that's you know, and I think people have gotten out of this this mindset of you know, let's I need a million I need a million copies, put it on the shelf. I'll I'll you know email you when I need five hundred of them. Well, now it's outdated three months later, and you right. got to scrap it, start all over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and also I'd like to add that uh, well, uh, when we talk about the ROI of uh, like the new uh, web to print project, the new integration, uh, the new storefront, uh, there are two additional factors uh, that uh, really affect the uh, ROI. Uh, the first one is the time uh, to market is well, how much you will <laughs> spend not selling uh, things online, and the second is the well, the budget. Uh, so uh, you don't want to um, like spend. A few hundreds of thousands <laughs> just to uh, create a perfect solution that nobody will use. So you just uh, m maybe you, you might want to uh, try uh, with like uh, try small and then uh, gradually uh, expand the offering. So uh, and that's that's what we uh, start well uh, uh, explaining to our uh, cast uh, new clients is that well. Uh, maybe uh, you want to start like the phase one uh, like start uh, with the smaller pro product uh, catalog and then if you get traction you will you'll see that all well, customers really need it uh, and you can uh, well uh, find find them online maybe in, like uh, some paid promotions and then we can um, easily do everything you want just uh, if you well, really understand that this project will uh, make profit uh, for you Mm -hmm. Alex, that's a fantastic approach. One of the things we, yeah. we always try and do is people will come to us and say, I want to build a, a B2C site. I want it to be consumer-led. I've got all this marketing budget. And we say, okay, well, the, what we suggest is first, get your get your, your main bread and butter B2B customers, build them a platform, build them a storefront, learn the process, learn about web to print learn about how to use the system. And then when you're up to speed and you are comfortable with, with that, then you move on to that onto the B2C. What that also does as well is that keeps ex existing customers sticky as well. So they're now getting double, double value from their where to print storefront because they're, they're looking after existing customers. Those that don't necessarily need to be um, handheld or, or you know, have a regular phone call or whatever, they can just be like, automated. And then they're ready to make the move to the next step. And a B2C site is a, it's a big deal. If you're doing it properly, you know, it's, a, it's a big investment, both time, energy, and financially. All right. Well, um, that's all. I, you guys could talk about web to print all day. I know, uh, <laughs> and I really appreciate you. Easy conversation. Yeah. Easy conversation. Yeah, it's fun. Um, but we try. To, we do try to narrow it down every time. But it's it's always <laughs> such a big. It's just such a big topic, and it's all integrated. So, um, but anyway, thank you guys all for joining us. Um, we'll have the October issue is out in a couple of days. I'm just going to put it up online um, by the end of the week. Um, and it'll be in mailboxes too. Um, that has a feature article on this topic. And there's so many more topics on web to print up on our website that, that goes into everything you guys talked about. So.